Imagine being able to write your own deep learning library from scratch using just C++. In this video, we'll understand the theory behind neural networks and get ready to implement it piece by piece into a fully functioning C++ framework. By the end of this series, you'll have your very own machine learning model training inside your custom built library. Hello, I'm Gautam and welcome to part one of building a machine learning library in C++. So today we will cover all the necessary machine learning background that is needed to build a library. We will create a C++ library from scratch, although that will come in part two of this series. And lastly, we'll perform very cool tasks with it. Stay tuned for that. For example, we will build a multilayer perceptron. Multilayer perceptron is just a simple neural network. And as you can see, the loss is going down and down as the number of iterations are increasing. And that's a good thing. That means our network is converging. And that also means that we have implemented the algorithm correctly. As the number of iterations are increasing, the network predicts the pixels with better accuracy. And as the number of iterations increase further, both the images are pretty much similar. Let's talk about the agenda for today. We will go over graph construction in deep neural networks. We will also calculate gradients of primitive operations. and Last of all, get ready for coding in lecture two. In lecture two, we will mostly be concentrating on implementation. Let's talk about the universal truth. Any mathematical operation can be broken down into addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Think of any formula, any mathematical formula. All it needs is these four primitive operations, and you can somehow package that complicated formula into these primitive operations. There are a couple of operators that we can define. They're commonly known as binary operators and addition, subtraction, multiplication, divisions are part of binary operations because they need two operands. So when we say A plus B, A and B are two operands that we need. So that's why it's called a binary operator. I just gave an example of A plus B. Let's say we have A, B, and we add it and we get a result, let's say C. It can be written mathematically down as C is equal to A plus B. Now let's calculate the derivative of C respect to A, right? If you have any experience with simple calculus, DC by DA is equal to one. And DC by DB is also equal. Now let's look into some real world graph scenarios. You have A, B, it gives C. And let's say the C value has some other functions that, be, that is being applied to it, okay? As I said, L, that is loss, is calculated using some mathematical operation on C. DL by DC is some value that we are interested in. More important than DL by DC, it's DL by DA. In neural network, the most important thing that you should always remember is that we are always interested how the loss value that is L changes with our input that is A. A real neural network will look very different from what I show on the screen, but it can be broken down into similar pieces of a graph. Let's say this is all the neural network we have. It's just a simple graph. In machine learning or deep learning, you have always heard of gradients, vanishing gradients, and all these terms. Ultimately, a gradient is how the output changes with respect to input. So here L is the output. So how output L changes with respect to A, that is DL by DA. And this lecture will walk you through how to calculate these for mathematical primitive operations. So let's talk about images now. Images are nothing but a 2D array of values where each value is called a pixel. So let's look into our mathematical formula now. DL with respect to DA can be written as DL with respect to DC times DC with respect to DA. That's a simple chain rule. Looking into the graph, DL with DC can be seen in the region highlighted with orange. That's called the outward gradient also. And DC with respect to DA is usually called local gradient and it's highlighted in purple. To calculate DL with respect to DA, we need to know the outward gradient as well as the local gradient. And when we multiply both of them, we'll get the required gradient that we are interested in. From our previous calculations, we already know DC with respect to DA is one. So DL 
respect to DA is equal to DL with respect to DC. If anyone asks you, what's the gradient of L with respect to A? You can just tell them it's just equal to the output gradient. That means DL with respect to DC. Let's talk about multiplication now. That's our second primitive operation. So multiplication happens A times B and we get C. And it can be written as C is equal to A times B. So DC with respect to DA is equal to B. That comes from calculus. And DC with respect to DP is A. In the graph, it looks like this. And we are interested again in how L changes with respect to A. Again, we segregate the graph into an output gradient as well as local gradient. We already know that DC with respect to DA is B. So DL with respect to DA will be the output gradient, that is DL with respect to DC, times the local gradient, which is B. And similarly, you can derive it, and I'm leaving up to you guys to do it as an exercise. DL with respect to DP will be the output gradient times A. So let's talk about subtraction now. It can be written as C is equal to A minus B, and DC with respect to D is equal to 1, just like in addition. And DC with respect to DB is now minus 1. And that's the differentiating factor with respect to addition. So again, we use the chain rule to calculate DL with respect to DA. And it can be again broken down into output gradient times the local gradient. And we have already calculated that the local gradient is 1. Right? So DL with respect to DA is equal to the output gradient. And similarly, DL with respect to DB is minus DL times DC. Now let's look at exponent. How can we write exponent as a mathematical function? Now I promised you that any mathematical function can be broken down into four primitive operations. So let's break it down. So A raised to power B is equal to C. That's a graph now. And here B can be a constant or it can be any variable also, but let's assume it's a constant for now. So B can be 1, 2, 3, or any value. So C can be written down as A raised to power B. And if you differentiate C with respect to A, you will get this mathematical function. That is B times A raised to power B minus 1. Now this all comes from calculus. So if someone is not comfortable with it, just look at the common derivatives of functions. Now let's calculate the gradients again using chain. So we will again segregate it into outward gradient and the local gradient. We just calculated the local gradient as b times a raised to power b minus 1. And again if we use the chain rule, dl respect to dA will be the local gradient times dl times dc. Now before we move forward, you might have that question, what about division? So Division is nothing but multiplication by b raised to power minus 1. And again, let's break it down. So c is equal to a times b raised to power minus 1. And we already know how to handle multiplication and exponents. But we can use the same basic principles to calculate gradient of this operation. So let's look into how does this graph really look. So it's a normal graph. a divided by b gives c. If you look at this operator more closely, you will see that this operator really calls the exponent operator. And all these mathematical operations are really these recursive calls in which one operator is built upon the other and so on. Let's move towards the more implementation side now. I think we have covered a good amount of theory, so let's look into the practical side of it. How does all these operators really look like in memory? You can think of these operators as a node of a graph. And all these nodes have a space in memory. So minus node here has some memory address. The division node has some memory address. It has some state also that we will cover when we implement it. But just to think of it visually, you can think of them as a memory address. Let's talk about forward propagation here. We have an input value A, and we apply an operator, and we ultimately get C. And then C 
get supplied to an operator and ultimately we have a loss value L. That's called forward propagation. We get the input and we calculate all the operations and ultimately we get the loss. And let's talk about the second type of propagation that's the backward propagation. And here we get the loss and we propagate it backwards and calculate gradients all the way through. It's the second type of propagation and here we will do the reverse. We will use the L value that we just calculated using forward propagation and we will try to propagate the value backwards. So for example, we will use L to calculate the gradient of C and then we will use that value and calculate the gradient of B and so on and so forth. We will keep going backwards. So that's it for part one of this lecture. In this part, my goal was to give you a brief overview of how to calculate gradients of primitive mathematical operations. We will use this to ultimately code up our own machine learning library. Stay tuned, like and subscribe this video and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. See you in the next video.